Hello everyone, this is T.C. Tompkins again, back at you with another session of Music and Conversations. We have a couple of special guests this week. I'm, I'm really honored this week. I've got some hot movers and shakers, as they say. First, I want to do this disclaimer that the views stated on this show by my guest or myself are, there, are theirs of ours and ours alone and not that of the management of the station or the station. Okay, we're going to be first talking to a good friend of mine uh, named Don, I think they call him D.C. Cody, Don Cody. Let's get Don Cody on the line here. Don. Hello, TC. Hey, Don, how you doing? I'm doing well and yourself. I can't complain, my brother, can't complain. I really appreciate you taking your Sunday uh, to come and, and on our show and talk to me. TC, the honor is totally mine. You are definitely a major industry veteran in this business. Everybody knows you. They love you. They respect you. You are one of the very few people in this entire industry that when when you, when you say you're going to do something, it actually gets done. What, Whatever you, know, you say you're going to do, it happens. And there's so many barracudas and so many misleading people in this music and broadcast right, yeah. industry. It is unreal. But I will say this about T.C. Tompkins, and this is before you did all the wonderful work you did with Michael Jackson and Thriller and Earth, Wind and & Fire, the OJs, the SOS Band, and many other people that you've worked with, because I, I know your resume, because I, when I was coming up, I worked with you, and we've done a, a lot of business, millions of dollars worth of That's business true. between Very you and true. I, from your company to mine, and I really thank you for that. But when you call me and say you would like for me to be on the show, Whatever I had on my schedule, I immediately omitted that, deleted that, because when T.C. Tompkins wants something, I'm there. Man, please. Well, you know what? I mean, after that introductory, Don, I mean, what the hell can I say? You know, but I, I wanted to talk to you, Don, because you're one of the people in the industry that I respect uh, as far as keeping your word and doing what you, you say you, you're going to do. And I've always found you to be a very... Uh, you know, up for up, uh, fourth right person uh, that was, uh, you know, was no no BS. And like you say, it's in this game, it is really tough to filter through all of the uh, BS that you have to get to to find good people uh, to do good work in this industry. You know, I, I, I think that's probably one of the reasons why independent music uh, has a bad name with the industry sometimes. But I've known you. Tell tell my audience, Don, about your history a little bit, and then we'll get to you being the founder and owner of Moses Media. Uh, how did you get started in the game, Don? Ironically, I got started because my sister, who is nine years older than I am, when I was 15, I was still in high school in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do in life. I had no thought about it because I was only 15 years old. At that time, my only thing that I wanted to do, I just started liking girls, and I couldn't drive, didn't have my own place, so I was all about hanging out with my friends and just kicking it. But my sister, who was dating one of the top DJs in St. Louis, Missouri, at the number one station at that time, mm -hmm. she started dating him, and she actually told him, why don't you take my brother down to the station with you and show him around or whatever. So at 15 years old, going to a radio station in a top 20 city, top 20 market, as we call it, in the industry, mm -hmm. once I saw the controls and and how they do things, one look was all it took, and I got started from there. You were bit. And you, got, the, you, got, you got bit, did you? Yeah, you had to bug. Well, I yeah. got bit, and the DJ that she was dating with somebody you know. We all right, you know what I was about to ask you that? Was that Doug Eason? No, it was Lee Michaels. Lee Michaels. Lee, Lee, Lee Michaels. Lord, Lee was Lee, just Lee in here. St. Louis. Uh-huh. Doug was the general manager of the radio station. That's okay. And Doug was the one who actually hired me years later. Mm -hmm. But I, I got started that way. Uh, 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 Lee was on in the afternoon from 3 to 7. 
Uh, 3 to 7 p.m. He was the hottest jock in the city. Man. And so I used to leave school and catch the bus. I didn't have a car at the time, so I had to catch the bus. Mm-hmm. We only had one car in the whole family with six people, and, and they couldn't just let me use the car and take me around all the time. I caught the bus downtown St. Louis mm-hmm. to go to the radio station to hang out with the DJs. And this was incredible. You're in Houston. Houston, Texas is a big market. St. Louis is just as big as Houston back then. And if you could imagine... Going to the radio station, hanging out with the DJs at 15 years old. Oh, you were in heaven. And that means... Yeah. That means while you're at the radio station, you see the artists coming in, mm-hmm. taking pictures with the DJs. These are big artists at the time. You know, mm. Beyonce is from Houston, but say before she was with Destiny's Child at the time... Uh, 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 before she was with Destiny Child, say she just come into the radio station mm-hmm. and you're in the lobby, you 15 years old, so you get to meet Beyonce. Oh, man, man, yeah, I, I know that was your d- dream job, but then you en- you ended up being uh, the music director or something over there, uh, Don. Uh, what did you? Yes, end- I did. Over the years, uh, I. I, I I worked in St. Louis for nine years on the radio. Okay. I managed and program eight different radio stations in eight different cities do, throughout my career. Mm-hmm. But it was incredible for me to be 15 years old, not even old enough to get a paycheck, not even old enough to work at the station. But I, I came through the back door route, almost like Henry Hill in the movie Goodfellas. Uh-huh. When I was at the station hanging out, the guys who pop up and say, uh, make a run for me and give me some cigarettes. Yeah. Make a run for me and give me a newspaper. Uh-huh. Make a run for me and give me some food. And downtown St. Louis, you walk one or two blocks, everything is there. So I didn't mind making the runs, and they gave me money, and they gave me <clears throat> music, and I learned so much from them. And then as the years went by, I wind up, instead of being a gopher at that radio station, I was part of management. Ain't that nothing, man. I mean, man, you know, I mean, truth is stranger than fiction on some of these things. Cause, uh, and then all of a sudden, I didn't even realize that you got started with Lee Michaels. And Lee was just here in this station a couple of weeks ago <laughs> down in Houston visiting uh, his daughter. Wow. Because of Lee, that's what got me in the radio. I had, I had, I had no intentions of getting the radio. didn't think anything about radio. But he was dating my sister. Mm. And the, the, the courtship only lasted a, you know, a very short term. It was about a year or two max. But well, your career's uh, lasted a lot longer than it has. I've been in the business for forty years now. Man, man. So I mean, so you went, you went to, you said several. You had eight markets that you had done uh, with radio. I managed and worked at eight different radio stations throughout the country, and many of those radio stations, TC. Uh, I managed 20, 30, 40, 50 employees. Mm-hmm. The cities that I worked at, and, and a lot of people, your audience, recognize these cities. They may have family members in these cities, but these cities are true and dear to me because I worked and live in all these markets. St. Louis, Missouri, Charlotte, North Carolina, Tampa, Florida, Little Rock, Arkansas, mm-hmm. Norfolk, Virginia, Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, Gainesville, Florida, okay, and and others, you know. Yeah, well, I know uh, Broadway now down there, and uh, St. James them still know you. I uh, mentioned you down there in Little Rock, uh, like you know you and and uh, Melvin and all of them. Melvin Jones from Memphis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, Little Rock, Arkansas was great during the time I was in Little Rock. Uh, Bill Clinton, he was the governor okay. at that time, and the station I was working at, the actual studios were in North Little Rock, which is not too far from the capital or the governor's mansion. And I used to see Bill Clinton just jog every day by himself, no Secret Service. Mm-hmm. Cause he wasn't the president then, yeah. but he would jog to the nearest McDonald's and get him an egg McMuffin and head back. Mm. Now, now, Don. I met you, I guess, what, about 10 years ago uh, when I first moved down here to Houston. Uh, and I met you through uh, your ownership uh, of Mil- Moses Media. Uh, mm-hmm. Tell my audience a little bit about Moses Media. Well, Moses Media is the company that I founded and I own. It was I founded in 2001. Which is we're celebrating our fifteenth anniversary this year. Okay. We started the company 
a couple months before 911 mm. uh and this was way back before google before paypal before ebay before facebook twitter instagram mm-hmm. and all of that and during that time the only thing was hot internet wise was AOL Hotmail and Yahoo. Yahoo was the biggest thing going. I remember that. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, actually, back then in 2001, very half the people call it email, and the other half call it electronic mail. Okay. But we started back in 2001, and uh, what we do right now and what we did back then is we help get records played on radio stations across the country. We actually secure airplay, and we provide major Internet audio presentations, email blasts. They look like a, a, a movie trailer. You mm-hmm. just go to your email, you click one link, and it's a 60-second video audio presentation. It looks like a movie trailer, but say if you have a recording artist, it's 20 seconds of announcement on the front, which video is there, 20 seconds of the hook, and then 20 seconds of announcement on the back. It's the same thing like a movie trailer. Mm-hmm. That's in layman's term because of the people in the industry, uh, say if it's a hot record from R. Kelly or 50 Cent or T-Pain or whatever, you just click that one link and it's like a, a video commercial. Introduction, on that. Yeah same link you can download the mp3 you can go to the artist's website you can go to artist's social networks well when we first started it was no social networks but that's what we do and we've been doing this for 15 years and over the years we have worked with with all kind of different labels and different artists from michael jackson to janet jackson to t-pain to little wayne to 50 cent to drake the future to uh, Chingy, Nelly, Kanye West, and some of the old school artists like the Isley Brothers, Patti LaBelle, Earth, Wind & Fire, The Bar Caves. I mean, we've, we've done probably within a 15-year, 10-year of my company, probably about 3,000 different artists. Well, I, I, can- I know, man, that your company has, <clears throat> has been very helpful to me, uh, and we've worked a lot of... Uh, projects together, done a lot of uh, promotions and marketing together, set up a lot of campaigns, had a lot of success too, thank God, uh, with a lot of the artists that we've uh, we've represented, and uh, I've always known your company to do uh, exactly what it says, and, I, and one thing I like about both of us, though, I guess, though, is I can always find you, you know, if it's, if it's something, if it's something that goes wrong, you called me with it before I called you. So yes. uh, I, I like that about you and your company. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show. Because, uh, matter of fact, both of you, both of us now are working on a project together. I won't mention the artist's name, but I called you about her uh, a few weeks, a few days ago, matter of fact. And uh, she's come through this this whole situation and thing that, you know, you go through a pile of BS before you actually get to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. And it's so frustrating uh, that 95% of the times that I represent independent clients, uh, I've got to go through at least a 45-minute tenure to to convince them that I'm not like the last person that just took their money. You know, right. yeah. So it it's it's a rough it's a rough game, and uh, it it takes fortitude and perseverance to make something happen. And uh, I've known you to be that type of person, and wanted to uh, wanted to give you a shout out to uh, to all of uh, to my audience and make them aware there's still some good guys in the game. You know. <laughs> Oh, it most definitely is, and and TC, just to elaborate on what you're saying, because I, I know you know the business, but since we're on the radio and people are listening and they may not know 100% of what you're speaking of, when you mentioned 95%, uh, there are people out here for these recording artists and record company executives, at least independent record company executives who are listening to this show on on the radio in Houston and mm-hmm. throughout the internet across the world, 
I just want to elaborate a little bit more on what TC is talking about. There, I would say maybe about 30% of the business that I get, TC, is from people who got burned in the business. They were taken to the cleaners, meaning somebody talked to them and told them they would do this for the record label, they would do that for the artist. They promised them the world and only delivered a city block. Mm -hmm. They took their money. They didn't deliver what they said they were going to do, whether it was in writing or was verbal. But as far as some of the stuff that they probably said, I will get you X amount of radio stations. I will get you Y amount of interviews. I will get you X amount of track dates or performances in these different cities. And didn't even amount to a fraction of that. Yeah. And so when people get those conversations and they get burned, then at that moment for the first time in their history or their music career, they decide to do some research yeah. and call around and ask who's out there that can help them promote their record to actually do the right things and then they'll come up with somebody like a Mr. T.C. Tompkins of Thompson's Marketing or Don Cody of Moses Media Incorporated or four or five other people and that's it. That's true. And then once you come in our camp, whatever we tell you we're going to do, we actually do it with no problem. No problem. 30% of my business come for that and yeah. I, I'm not hurting for money. Uh, I'm not making the kind of money I used to make years ago because the industry has changed, but in, no matter what happens, I'm still not hurting for money. Absolutely. And whenever somebody come in my camp and spend, I don't care if you're spending a $1,000 or $100,000, we're going to give you the proper service if it was our record. Absolutely. And, and, and that is one true thing I can say to my audience and, uh, about you, you know, about you and your company that you do, you are reputable, and that is one of the few things that is very rare in the game. Uh, I've I've just never done business any other way. Uh, but Don, I wanted to also mention that you just won a big award, man, and I missed the ceremonies. Uh, you won a living legend uh, award. Was it last year? It was. Yeah, they. The entire industry presented me with a Living Legends Award in 2015 in Los Angeles, California. And this particular award, to put it in perspective, it's like if you were an actor and you got an Oscar. Mm -hmm. If you were a recording artist and you got an Emmy. If you were a Broadway performer and you got a Tony Award. It's the highest award that they can award you in this business and some of the previous recipients of this prestigious award were Quincy Jones, um, L.A. Reid, who used to be with Babyface and L.A. Reid. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he runs uh, the, the label. Epic Records um, now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the highest award they can give you and I got it last year and um, I was totally humble and honored to receive the award and at the same time not to brag and put my pat myself on the back it was about time because yeah. i've done a lot of stuff <laughs> i ain't gonna lie man I, i've done a lot of stuff and i helped a lot of people along the way their careers yeah and and managing my team and you know it wasn't i was looking for it or really expecting what it helps, i would say this was i rather for people to recognize me before i die absolutely as opposed to i'm absolutely. dead and gone and now they're gonna give me all these awards because i'm six feet under the ground I can't receive that. Well, it was a Living Legends Award. I'm, I'm a member of that foundation on the advisory committee, and uh, I, I think it was well-deserved. Uh, you, you know, I uh, had to change my, my game because, you know, everything in life changes, and if you don't adapt, you sort of lose, uh, you lose control because, I mean, people were amazed that, you know, I used to be a – what they call a gunslinger. That's what Paris used to call me, a gunslinger, back in the day uh, uh, pushing records and changed over to this digital thing and put my, uh, you know, got a grip with that. And you were, all, you were in this digital. Matter of fact, when we first met, you were heavy into the digital presentation and the social media and all of those things. So you've adapted, Don, with the industry. Well, what happened on that, and I'm glad you brought that up, because I had to think for the future. Back in 2001, when, as I mentioned when we first started, I was 42 years old, and after working at eight different radio stations, 
in different cities, I had to think for the future because I didn't want to be 50 trying to figure out where I was going to go to my next radio mm -hmm. station. Mm -hmm. And speaking of next radio station, see, some people think once you get in radio, you got it made. But see, even that's in a, Houston, okay, yeah, that's only a tough a, game. four or five urban stations in Houston. If oh, you would yeah. get fired in Houston, Texas, or you wanted to leave Houston, Texas and go to another city, well, uh, there's so many radio stations in Houston, so in order for you to move on, you may have to go to Dallas, or you may have to go to L.A., you may have to yeah. go to Chicago. Because they have non that means you got to take your kids out of school I know. in the middle of the semester. Mm -hmm. Leave all their friends behind. Oh, it's a, it's uh, a start tough. Start all over. That. Your, your job is to get another job, but the, it affects your kids. And I got tired of renting U-Haul and ride of trucks going up and down the highway. Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know, I got to think for the future and come up with something because I didn't want to be 50 years old up and down the highway again. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. Well, you know, I mean, you. so you had to reinvent yourself. I did. Yeah. So what happened in 2001, uh, I was thinking, how can I make a significant difference? After managing eight radio stations, I had five roller decks of contacts mm -hmm. and these contacts that I had were people all over the country overseas these are multi-millionaires big company record executive people that make decisions on what happens and I decided to open up my own company and provide a service to them and it was very timely because once we opened up two months later, all of a sudden it was 9-11. Mm -hmm. The World Trade Center came down. The flights was restricted, and the service that I provided was instead of you sending a record rep into the city to talk to the program director of the radio station or doing a bunch of mail outs, we could do a massive email blast yeah. and present your product out in front of the people and get an immediate response, and the labels love that. Yeah. Well, you, you've been very innovative, man, in what you've done and your approach to what you do and how you represent your clients. Hey, man, I want to thank you for taking off your Sunday and coming over here and talking to us. I Hopefully, uh, one of the young independent artists out there will uh, remember that there's Moses Media and uh, that does represent independent and major artists, and they do an excellent job at it. Don Cody is a personal friend of mine and a real good human being and like i said don thanks again man you have a blessed sunday i'll be talking to you monday anyway because we got some we got some projects we got to work <laughs> thank you tc is always a pleasure anything you need for me to do without a doubt i'm there tc is one of the very few people that i know if i was in in california coming out of a hotel room he said it was snowing in california i wouldn't have to even look out the window just, just to make sure i see snowflakes <laughs> man you're too heavy for me god bless you my brother take care of yourself Thank you,